Hi, I'm Graham Glenn, Assistant Provost and Executive Director for Teaching, Learning Plus Technology at Stony Brook University. And this is Innovations in Education. In our show, we feature faculty and staff using innovative approaches to teaching and applications of educational technology that have had a positive effect on student learning. In this show, I'm joined by Wendy Tang, Associate Professor in Computer and Electrical Engineering, and Garrett Wolfe, who's a Professor of Management and Director of the Innovation Centre in the College of Business. We will be discussing interdisciplinary collaborative teaching. Wendy and Garrett, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Can you tell me a little bit about the courses that you teach? Yes, um, the course that I'm teaching is called uh, Engineering Capstone Design. Basically, uh, it's for electrical and computer engineering students. And that uh, is that in the senior year that they're going to they do a project. Normally, it's some sort of system. The idea is that they're going to pull together all they learn in the four year mm -hmm. and then kind of design some sort of system and that uh, we have, for example, this year, 65 students in the course. Okay, and Garrett? I teach an MBA course called Technological Innovation. It's a core course for MBA students where students learn how innovation is driven by inventors on the one hand and entrepreneurs on the other. Um, getting the inventors together with the entrepreneurs creates the innovation. Okay. So you guys are now collaborat collaborating on this course. Tell me why you decided to do that and what the benefits are. Um, I guess we started it because um, we, we see that for engineering education, it would be good for our engineers to have some sort of uh, marketing uh, uh, sense. Say so if they're designing a system that you'll be useful or has some market potential of it. So mm -hmm. we start talking. And also, uh, it's also as a result of a National Science Foundation funded project in which indeed that's what we're trying to do, incorporate entrepreneurial skills into our engineering curriculum. So I spoke to uh, Garrick and that um, we kind of find the synergy between his course and that that uh, his student, the MBA student, could help our engineering students in consulting and, and, and working our business plan. Okay, so I can see the advantage of building, bringing the business expertise to the engineers. What do the engineers bring to the business students? Well, uh, they bring a lot to the students because the business students then understand that innovation requires the inventiveness of engineers. And the uh, business grows and the economy grows because of the inventiveness that gets brought to the marketplace. Uh, the business students understand the marketplace, but they don't understand uh, how invention works. But working with an engineer, they understand how the invention process works and then can help the engineer mm -hmm. with how do you find a market for that invention and how do you deliver to that market. Okay. So you're both separately teaching this course with different groups of students. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so how, how are these teams formed out of those two separate courses? Well, she'll describe how her yeah. teams are formed and then I'll describe mine. Okay. Yeah, so basically uh, our team in the beginning of the semester, students will form teams and they pick on projects that's supervised by our faculty. And that, uh, so it's basically uh, a lot of it based on their background. You know, some will require, say, embedded systems. Others will require, uh, um, some semiconductor background, that kind of thing. So they do different projects and form teams and s yeah, that's more or less, you know, yeah, and with, and working with all faculty. the students in your groups work with all? Actually not. So, so we basically, the major component is the obviously the engineering content, which is the s engineering system design. So but what we do is that we offer to students if they want to work out a business plan for their system, then we'll go with uh, Garrick students. And what motivates, are these students that truly believe these products are going to be marketable or are they just doing this to get the experience? 
Yes, this is a good question. Indeed, uh, we do have like uh, not that many number of students actually taking the initiative for, for the obvious reason that it does require extra work. But for those that participated, actually got a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, for one, they actually, many of them that participated will go into the DARE competition, the university. DARE stands for uh, DARE to Risk It Entrepreneurship and it's won um, by uh, Dr. Emery Scheid in the vice president, I think she's in the office of, uh, the, she's the vice president of the Office of Economic Development. And that is an annual event. It's open to all the students in the university to, uh, it's a competition, uh, more or less a business plan competition. Okay. So our students having the opportunity to work with Garrick students, then they basically are able to write a business plan and then go into the competition. And a couple years ago, we were thrilled that one of our students who graduated, that they entered into a team, they didn't win that, they didn't win that year. And then the following year, he, led, he became a graduate student. And he led another team to enter into a competition and won $30,000. Wow. So we were very thrilled for you know, to his accomplishment. Yeah. Eric, your teams? Well, uh, just as not all engineers are interested in figuring out how to get there, product to market, not all business students necessarily want to work with engineers, so I have volunteers of students who want to work with the engineers. They may have an engineering background mm -hmm. themselves, they may have had some experience with engineers. I don't require that all the students work with the engineers, it's an option. And so we do a matching game yes. uh, between the engineers that are interested in the MBA students that are interested. And um, it, it seems like maybe uh, uh, 10 to 20 percent of the engineering students are really interested in doing something. Yeah. There may be another uh, 50 percent that are curious, yes. but uh, I don't know. I don't want to um, uh, do it. And the same would be true on the business uh, student side. Uh, contrary to maybe, uh, not all business students want to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Probably yes. only five or ten percent uh, want to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. So those five to ten percent in my class who are really entrepreneurial oriented would be looking for those engineering students who are int really interested in getting a product to market. So we're yes. bringing together the minority of students on it rather than f forcing the majority to do something that they really aren't interested in doing. So since this is an option for the students, how are you incorporating grading and, and so on into, into the, the student's final grade? For grading, for our side, we basically, it's the major aspect is the engineering content. Mm -hmm. So that, we are mindful on that because this is an engineering course. So, um, we really not really grading the business aspect of it, but student will, like I say, will enter into a competition. We also have, we also run a mentoring panel, and Gary is also on the panel, in where we invited um, industry uh, professionals and professional engineers, and uh, even an IP lawyer and some entrepreneurs coming, and students actually will make presentation to this panel. Once. Now, is this just the combined teams, or do all of your students? Do oh, this? Uh, well, they are all invited. Again, it's an optional thing. Okay. <laughs> so that, like, so some of the teams who has the business the plan would actually participate, and for even for those that didn't uh, work with uh, Garrick student, actually many of them do participate in the panel, and there they will get questions from the panelists that, well, how would you, like, what kind of market your system will be used? And that really get them to think. And I have an interesting story that um, one of the teams got uh, come up with a, they think it's a cool idea in the sense of they, they're thinking to um, incorporate our FID's uh, technology, radio frequency technology, uh, into the cell phone, and then um, using, applying it in a museum setting, and that each artifact of the museum will have a RFID tag with the information about the artifact, its origin, and the unique aspect of it. And the, their thinking, the application side of it, is that um, museum visitors will have the cell phone, and then, where, and then with a year uh, uh, check, that kind of thing, and would like walk the walk over the different uh, artifacts, and then uh, kind of listen to what 
you know, each one, the uniqueness and its, it's uh, different aspects of it. So they think, oh, this is a cool idea and it works. So they're really going forward with it. And then they work with, actually in that particular case, and a group of MBA students in Germany. And the German MBA students um, did a market analysis. They went to museum, the administrators, as well as the visitors. And then they came back to report to the engineering students is that, well, that this is a cool idea it, and it works, but there's no market for it. Because the museums, and have the, many of them have their audio uh, tour equipment. Mm -hmm. They're not about to throw it away and they adopt something sim somewhat similar function. So that was really like an eye-opening experience for our students. And the suggestion from the MBA student was that actually your idea is good, but it's better used in, for example, um, uh, uh, um, an park, amusement park. Say if you go to Disney World, it would be good to know what's the queue, how long one would take to, 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 to wait in certain attractions, those, and they don't have that kind of infrastructures. So that would be an applicable, uh, and that, that kind of application will have a market. Mm -hmm. And that would be really a kind of, a very good educational experience for our engineering students. And you mentioned that these MBA students were in Germany. How did that, uh, that happen? That particular case, um, yes, because we have the National Science Foundation funding. So I work with um, an MBA professor in Germany. And she got a bunch of MBA students in Germany working with our students. And, and similar how to did that collaboration occur? Actually, um, it kind of came um, by coincidence. She was visiting Stony Brook, and I got invited to meet with her over lunch, and we started talking. Mm -hmm. And she's interested in more collaboration with Stony Brook. And then uh, we just have this idea with Garrett, and, and that is working out well. And I say. Were your MBA students also working with these students in Germany? Not with the uh, German students, but it, uh, the, the opportunity for the yes. uh, students, for Wendy students to work with, with various uh, people, the, Germ the German students or the uh, American students. I think her example is a wonderful one of uh, the. the educational challenge for helping engineering students and business uh, students, they, they each see the world uh, uh, very differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I taught at Georgia Tech at one time in my life and learned how engineers <laughs> do really see the world uh, differently and they love a, a technology and think that it can be applied easily right. uh, while the the business student is much more sensitive to yeah. what's the competition for this technology, will it work in this setting, why, why would it work in this yeah. setting, and that's what the business students were doing there. And it's, we've had some of our MBA students have the same kind of mm. uh, discussions on, on projects, and uh, it, it can either be enlightening or it can also generate some heat. And that is, the engineers can go, you don't like my idea, do you? <laughs> uh, that's not, and, and I don't want to talk with you because you don't like my idea. Saying that to the uh, business students, you go, no, 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 we, we like your idea, we just don't like the application yes. uh, of it. Well, you don't like my idea. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, 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 learning to, yeah. to talk across yes. uh, the disciplines uh, is the uh, issue, and, and I've had the engineering students in Wendy's class going, fine, 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 uh, you've said all, all that, uh, but we're not really interested in that. We've got to get this technology down. Right. And we go, yes, you do. If we build it, they will come. Uh, uh, yeah, right. but uh, they go, don't, we don't need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. it, but it's very valuable that they get that experience in college rather than having to wait and fail in the business world. Well, see, I think the most successful, we, we, the most successful has been bringing the engi practicing engineers into Wendy's class. While our MBA students have learned a lot and the engineers have learned uh, a lot from it, the, probably the best learning from the engineers is to have engineers who have worked for the 10 or 15 yeah. or 20 years and say, look, this is the way Yes. business looks at this yes. and they are not interested in whether yes. it's this it's got to work this way so when the MBA students say well you know there's no market for this they go well you just don't like me but when an engineer says this who's working at Motorola for yes. 15 years and says if you want to get this out to the market you want it, this is Pay what attention. you're going to have to do and that response is not going to work when you're working 
So the, the students who were working from Germany with students here, how, how did they communicate and collaborate? Um, from Skype and um, mostly we, we ran through Skype, basically, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a challenge because, mm -hmm. that's, for example, it's a six hour difference. So that basically gives us a very short time frame mm -hmm. in the morning that we can communicate because- but some, but some very interesting international yes, exposure yes. for those students. And, and then um, in the beginning, you know, there's the accent issue, then the German students speak, most of them. And my collaborator in Germany, I purposely find students that is fluent in English. And in one, one of the teams actually was led by an American student happened to be studying in Germany. Okay. Yeah. But still there is uh, the language issue, the cultural issue, and also time, time difference. The, I think the time difference is when I, I, I've taught uh, in Sweden yeah. uh, from the United States, having taught in Sweden at the engineering school there, and then done distance learning. And the, the Swedish students know English, uh, and Germans, for the most part, uh, do. But there still is this cultural uh, uh, difference. We, we as Americans, uh, uh, can think entrepreneurially um, as a natural thing. Even the engineers understand it well. In Sweden, entrepreneurship is something of a novelty. Uh, engineering is uh, quite natural to them, but to think entrepreneurially is uh, not as natural. Yeah. But uh, Nokia did pretty well. Excuse me? <laughs> Nokia did pretty oh, well. well yeah, but Nokia is Finnish, and they're, oh, okay. <laughs> you see, oh, they're not Swedish. I stand corrected. <laughs> no, there are some wonderful Swedish firms. I thought you said IKEA, and no. IKEA was well, founded yep, by an one. entrepreneur. Right. Um, but uh, uh, we generate a lot more startup businesses in this country than they do there. The year that I spent in Sweden was because uh, in, in the year 2000, all of a sudden, Swedish engineer, young Swedish engineers were starting their own businesses, and they were scared. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, the engineering dean was scared, and the government was scared that there weren't going to be employees for Ericsson. But they were all going out and doing this, yes. and they wanted to understand how the... I said, you ought to applaud them, not be scared that they're, mm -hmm. you're not going to have employees for Ericsson. Ericsson can always offer more money to right. these right. people and buy up their products. But that was just the culture. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the successful entrepreneurs that I was mentoring, engineers there, said, get me to the States because I'll have more, more cultural support mm -hmm. for what I want to do. So it, this is all the complexities of trying to support technology businesses and it can go across countries as well as yes. across disciplines. Okay. Yeah. Wendy and Garrett, thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank, thank you. you. It was fun. If you have questions for either of our guests, you can post them on our Facebook site. Just search for Innovations in Education. We will also post the contact information for both of our guests on the TLT website at tlt.stonybrook.edu. I'm Graham Glynn and I hope you enjoyed this very interesting uh, innovations in education show.